Hi there, welcome to a second battle report and our first for 40k from the Warlocks Tower. It's me, John. Um, I'm playing my good mate Glenn today at Spurs4VR on Twitter. Um, get in touch with him, give him a shout. Uh, so here's a picture of my army that I'm using today. We're playing Orcs versus his Space Wolves. Um, I've taken two cats, thus allowing me to take uh, two war bosses and two pain boys. What I've done is I'm still in the process of painting this army, obviously. Um, what I've done is basically maxed out on my uh, knob bikers. So the guys who are dark green orcs mounted on boars are uh, knob bikers with power claws. The other boars, either the hex race from my other army or, um, or the one without the uh, or, uh, rider are not bikers without power claws. So there's two, a unit six, unit seven, and unit five. Um, then I've got the war boss who is white. Um, he has the thinking cap and is obviously my general. Uh, both the pain boys are the same on bikes with um, a um, got orderly, which I forget throughout both battle. Uh, then there's a war boss with the excellent. Lucky Stick, which is the gentleman with the red mohawk. Now, to allow the CAD to work, the double CAD, I've got four units. Now, I'm not a fan of boys. I just think strength for AP dash is just a non-starter. So, just to save points, I've gone for four units of Grotz, uh, Gretchen, uh, all with a runt herd, all with a runt hound to allow that reroll. Um, then we've got two lobbers, so the Squid gobber, bottom left is a lobber, and there's a metal lobber um, also in the thing. Uh, the squigoth represents a truck, which is a fast attack choice. Um, now, basically, the grots, I think, are just great. They're just sitting on objective, just being cheap, not doing an awful lot. They're occasionally charging to combat against weak opposition. Um, and then um, on the top right of this picture, you'll see that I'm doing a Donald Trump, building a wall uh, with my Aegis defense line. Um, so again, to shoot the army, which obviously the Space Wolves are not in this case, I can just sit behind the Aegis defense line and hold my objectives. If I'm not um, uh, in the track, zooming around, taking objectives. So uh, basically there's one unit of Grotz who will infiltrate. The, lucky, uh, the thinking cap gave me um, some infiltrators, so they'll and flank. Uh, then uh, one of the the small unit of knobs will also have flank, which will be a key part of the game, which we'll see later on. Now, yeah, let's have a little look at deployment. Oh, what we're doing is we've got both in this part of the world. It seems to be that we have both a maelstrom and an eternal war mission going on all at once. So we've got the scouring um, and the um, Mountain of war happening all at once. So the primary is the scouring. So here's an overview of the deployment. So I've got unit you know, grots, big unit uh, knobs with my war boss and a pain boy in, a truck with the unit gretchen in, a lobber um, going on up, uh, pretty similar, another unit grots uh, and a lobber behind that, um, and then a unit of knobs over by the side. Now, in reality, the Aegis defense line are pretty much a waste of time. Um, I'm aware of that, but it's almost just a good practice sticking them out in front. I probably should have just chucked them out of the way. They're going to cause me more problems than they solve. Um, but yeah, good practice or whatnot. Um, and then we'll go through Glenn's deployments a bit more. He's a pretty good painter, so it's a good idea to have a look at his army closer as we look at the deployment. So for my deployment, I've also got a unit of Grotz infiltrating and a unit of five wall bikers with two power claws also infiltrating. So basically we've got <coughs> some wall foam kit out pretty full on, axes, hammers, storm shields, etc. Um, a unit of three thunder walls with a psyker on a bike and the uh, Iron Priest with his three dogs out in front. So that's all joined together, one big unit um, behind those buildings. On from that, we've got similar thing, three Thunderwolf Cavs 
uh, Iron Priest and three Wolves. Um, then behind that is a unit of Wolfen, which makes up a murder pack with the other unit. Um, now they have no additional kit. Coming out of the skies in a drop pod is a Dreadnought and a unit of five guys with Combi Melters and um, Iac, Iac, Iron Fist, who go with a hammer as well. So that's Glenn's army. So pretty mobile on the whole, pretty fighty. Um, so we'll see how that works. Two fast fighty armies facing off against each other. So yeah. So turn one, down comes the drop pod, out pops the Dreadnought uh, pretty quickly. He zaps two Gretchen with his heavy flamer, finishes off the um, artillery piece with his cannon. They run off the board for first blood. So that was a pretty good start for Glenn. He's left his off the drop pod, holding one of the Maelstrom objectives. Um, so yeah, nice stop there. Um, basically, all his units pushed up towards me. Um, I think Glenn regretted he pushed this quite far forward. I've basically board edged most of my decent units. Um, the grots are a little bit further forward just to be close enough to hold objectives if they need to. But um, I know that when I go in with my power fists, because of Furious Charge, I want to be strength 10. I want to be auto killing his units, uh, his models, if he fails his power. Uh, his storm shield saves so I'm pretty happy with this I got from the thinking cat I got moved through runes and stealth runes so those runes in front don't hold too much fear for those bikers so we can be zooming through there pretty fast um, so yeah so turn two to my turn one happens and I charge forward with the cavalry, uh, the cavalry, the bikers, smash into that unit um, with a pretty short six, seven inch charge, um, decimate the unit. Um, this is me after my reform, I should have taken a photo of the combat. But basically what was really interesting about it is the unit was so spaced out between the walls at the front, so I could contact the walls at the front and the models right at the back, the Psyker and the Iron Priest particularly, couldn't come forward into the combat. So that meant I could hurt them and they could not hurt me. So through positioning my unit on my right and going into the unit, it meant they couldn't come forward and get into combat. Um, the other unit bikers came round, charged the Dreadnought, um, lost a couple of models, but decimated the Dreadnought. So pretty pleased about that. The truck wandered forward uh, to hold the Maelstrom objective with the Grots inside being troops. Um, Objectives occurred, they, they obviously overruled the, the, the drop pod and took that for me. So, um, yeah, we were pretty even on the Maelstrom points at this point, uh, but we'll see how that goes. From the scouring point of view, there's basically less than half the objectives on this right flank and slightly more on my left flank. Now, down from the drop pod, out pop the Maelstrom gun guys, I guess with me having no vehicles to speak of. Um, apart from one truck with Gretchen in it, um, it's not a huge amount of targets. So the Melguns came down and zapped off one biker. The Wolfen came forward. Now I've still got a few power claws um, floating around, but I was a little bit concerned about these guys. I know they're pretty fighting and they're pretty well kitted out, but I thought it should go okay. Um, so on this flank, it was pretty interesting. The Iron Priest has pushed forward. Glenn's played this quite well to my mind. He's trying to tempt me forward with the Iron Priest. So he's trying to take, tempt the boars, uh, the bikers out of cover, hit the Iron Priest. Obviously, I can only consolidate, can't consolidate into the Thunderwolves, and then they get to charge me. And I think that the Wolfen, even without kit, and the Thunderwolves coming in on the charge, I think that's a pretty one sided um, thing. And I will end up um, having problems contending with that. So that's a good play on Glenn's part. So the problem for Glenn though was that my I got lucky, my reserves turned up, the five bikers, and I rolled for infiltrate the right side. They came in behind the Thunderwolves, I managed to chip off a wound with a shooting. It wasn't really the key point. It means then he's got a split decision. He can put in his Thunderwolves and try and grind me out um, after they presumably decimate his Iron Priest. 
or um, he can turn around and deal with the threat that's coming in behind him. Either way, he's got a problem. So I got pretty lucky there. Uh, turned out the Wolfram made short work of my knob bikers on this flank. Um, don't think the shooting did an awful lot, and they just got decimated. I think I killed two, and I got fairly lucky to kill those guys. Um, it was very one-sided fight. Wolfram kitted out, just chewed through combats. It was impressive, um, and and they killed the unit. They didn't run them down. They just killed the entire unit. Um, I killed the high priest pretty easily. I don't think I took many wounds back in return. Um, so yeah, an interesting situation for Glenn to manage with the bikers behind and the bikers in front. Now, those numbers on the dice, the white dice, are the points for um, the scouring, which is our primary objective. So there's, there's five points here, and just below this picture is some Gretchen set on four points. So yeah, here's the Gretchen, um, so just below four points. Some wolves come on. Um, I'm actually reasonably confident the wolves are going to get beaten up by the Gretchen. Um, he doesn't like my artillery, which, um, yeah, I think he makes a wrong decision in a moment. He charges the lobber. Oh no, here on the other flank, the the wolves are surrounding me. Um, the melter guys, iron fist. Yeah, it's not looking good for the Gretchen. It's going to be fairly one sided. Um, and so yeah, in go, he decides to ignore the bikes behind him, puts the Thunderwolves and the Wolfen into this big knob bike unit with my war boss, not my general, my general's already dead, and the pain boy in. Um, yeah, I'm concerned about this, but I think the Wolfen not being told about makes a huge difference. Um, the Wolves below charge into the lobber, in hindsight, I think he should have charged into the Gretchen nuts. Um, but yeah, I don't think it changed the game greatly, but yeah, he took out the lobber pretty easily with the wolves. Um, so they are not side wolves, they're, they're a pack. Um, so he charged in he, uh, the Thunderwolf cavalry and the Wolfen and basically destroyed the unit, uh, but lost most of the Wolfen. Um, and lost one of the Thunderwolf Cav, uh, ended up a drawn combat, absolutely spot on draw. Um, so we both stick around, at which point Glenn's face drop, realizing that it's a very easy move in with the, um, the other bikers, and he basically needs to win this combat pretty quickly. So, yeah, on the other flank, Gretchen got decimated very easily by the wolves and killed a couple of wolves back. Uh, the wolves destroy the lobber and consolidate towards the three points there, which would, if they managed to hold the three points, would be good for Glenn, would win the game. Um, My Gretchen decided to charge into the wolves, and I thought they'd make good work of it. Gretchen, although they're weak, they're only one attack, and they're weak weapon skill. As long as it's not weapon skill five, they're still hitting on fours, um, and they kick out 20 attacks for the Gretchen, and another three for the run herd. So they actually do some damage against um, non-elite units. Um, I was pretty unlucky. You popped the six for the, the save on the wolf, but then Rizium Wolf has kept him alive, which meant I lost combat. Um, and yeah, fell my, my break chest and got eaten by the wolves. Yeah, very full wolf eating the whole 10 uh, Gretchen and a run herd uh, and allowing him to move towards that three point, which as I say would hold him the game. Uh, in the middle though, the bikers charge in. I was lucky I held on the war boss. He took two wounds in that combat, um, but yeah, managed to keep himself alive. The bikers ripped apart the final wolf, um, wolf and, and then the power claw guys killed the thunder wolves. Um, I've moved my truck up with the Gretchen in to hold one objective, and then basically at this point, um, it was very obvious that the bikers were going to swoop down, 
either scare off or kill the Fenrisian wolf. Um, unit of Gretchen could then hold one objective, two points, three points for holding the um, with the truck, and then I was going to hold the three points here. So Glenn decided that yeah, um, he conceded the major objective, and I conceded the maelstrom. He, he was well ahead on points. He'd drawn some good cards and then played it well, moved to the right objectives at the right time. Um, but yeah, it came down to basically um, with the Thunderwolves being his primary mobile um, unit and the drop pods coming in with the shooters on the right flank um, along with the Wolfen being over there, he just didn't have the mobility to get over and contest the left flank. Um, which is where most of the points were. Um, and basically that's what the game came down to. Uh, the Wolfen were very choppy, very nasty with um, the hammers and the axes and the claws. Um, we talked about it afterwards and I think he'd be best off splitting the amount of combat punch that there is in those units um, so that both are pretty good because the tooled up unit decimated my, my bikers in a round, whereas the Wolfen without kit just just didn't dent it. And it kind of, I mean, I've seen a lot of lists with either boys or um, normal bikers, not mob bikers. And it kind of says the same thing to me, that when you've got combat power, you need that AP in there. So to my mind, the only thing that makes this army work is the amount of power claws I've got. I know they're expensive, I know they're unwieldy, um, but the way combat works where the only player gets to allocate wounds, you can just put them on the guys in the unit without um, power claws, take them off first, and then punch back with full force with power claws. Um, so yeah, it was good. The thinking cap, I really like. Um, I can see why the Lucky Stick is so popular. It's such a good item, so cheap for what it does. But the Thinking Cap giving me the move through runes, and the way it works is very likely to give you move through runes, um, is just brilliant with its bikers. Um, the Gretchen were great, so much cheaper than taking a unit of boys. Yeah, they didn't do a lot, they killed a few wolves, um, and that was about it, but they just cover so much board space. Uh, the disappointing thing today was the lobbers. Yeah, it made Glenn spread out his units and um, keep the two inches apart, but really it didn't change his mind on anything. Um, and so, yeah, that one was um, a bit of a shame thing. So I think it really came down to one decision on turn one, uh, which Glenn, I think, immediately realized was a mistake. Um, that. He is pushed too far forward with his unit on his on my right flank, um, and that just allowed me to get my bikers in. Uh, on top of that, spacing out the unit made a big difference because the way piling works, that you pile in three inches, and you've got to be within two inches of a model that's in combat. Um, it allowed me to pile all my guys, basically put them in a situation where I piled all my guys into the uh, Cyber Wolves um, and then he couldn't pull his Iron Priest and his Psycho Force to get those attacks in there. Um, so, yeah, I, I think I'd have still wiped the unit out, but I'd have taken a few more casualties in return. So, although in the end Glenn conceded this game, it was a close game. It certainly could have swung on that combat. If I hadn't hit the charge, which was... Um, six or a seven. I mean, it was a decent long charge as well, um, and it meant I couldn't shoot into the combat before because I definitely didn't want to kill a wolf and give myself a, a nine charge. Um, then uh, it made quite a difference. I think the thing we also realised was the power of the Daka guns on the bikers is, is just awesome. When it comes to just needing to chip off a wound, like with the Iron Priest combat um, in the middle, uh, it just allowed me to kill all the dogs first and then go in um, just against um, a fellow unwieldy opponent um, without having to take hits first and potentially take a couple of casualties. So yeah, it was a good game, good fun game.
Uh, I think the combination of the maelstrom and the eternal war together takes a little bit of getting used to, but when you get the two together, it is fun, it is good. Um, and I think Maelstrom can just swing so much on just getting the right cards that it is tricky. But yeah, it'll be interesting to see how this army fares against a more shooty army against different opponents. But yeah, it was good fun, it was a good game, and um, I look forward to playing Glenn again.